Hello and good morning. Welcome back to Mosquito Bites Live, the scare edition. Just kidding. Um, once again, this is Mosquito Bites Live. My name is Pablo Cabrera, communication specialist here at the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. And we're bringing you a very exciting, scary edition today. Uh, where we'll be talking about all things ticks when it comes to a mosquito and vector control. What could be scarier than mosquitoes, like Ada that's hanging over me right there? Um, what could be scarier than that but their vector friends, ticks? So today we have the incredible privilege to speak with Megan Saunders, PhD, who will be joining me in just a few seconds about all things ticks. So if you have any questions about ticks, feel free to submit them in the questions below. We already see you guys uh, jumping in. Hey, Allie, uh, Mosquito SWAT Lab, good to see you guys uh, joining us. So Megan, I see you have requested, and I'm going to go ahead and accept her. And we should have Megan joining us in just a few seconds as Instagram gets through. There we go. Hi, Megan. Hi, Pablo. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you came very well prepared. I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, Megan, uh, I just want to give you an opportunity to give a brief introduction of who you are and where you're coming from. All right. Yeah. Hi, my name is Megan Saunders. I am a medical entomologist, which means that I study biting arthropods like mosquitoes. Um, and I have been studying these little blood suckers for golly, over 10 years now, all over the United States from the Southeast to the Northeast to the Mid-Atlantic. And uh, I finally landed back out here in Beautiful, yet currently rainy, hooray, Northern California, where I work with ticks pretty much primarily now, so. Awesome. Well, welcome back to California. We love having so many uh, talented and smart individuals here, especially working in our vector control world, uh, and especially when it comes to ticks. Uh, now, you briefly mentioned a uh, medical entomologist. Uh, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, so a medical entomologist is a scientist who studies any number of different biting arthropods. So those would be things like ticks, mosquitoes, fleas, kissing bugs, pretty much the things that bite people and can spread disease to them. So that is what a medical entomologist does. All the, all the bad things that can make us potentially sick. <laughs> I mean, maybe not all, but the certainly some of the more interesting ones. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. So uh, once again, this is Mosquito Bites Live. And today we're talking with uh, Megan Saunders, PhD, and all things ticks today. And my first question is, which I always find surprising, as I'm a native Californian, I've always lived here in California. I love living in California. Um, but whenever I've spoken to residents, people always get very interested that they're surprised we have ticks here in California. So you work with ticks here and people are surprised to hear that we do have ticks. What are the biggest misconceptions when it comes to ticks? Oh my goodness. So honestly, I'm with you. Some like growing up in California, I rarely saw ticks, but honestly, in California, we have over 40 species of ticks. Wow. And so one of the biggest misconceptions we have is that all ticks are the same. Honestly, like humans will only encounter maybe six types of ticks that will bite you, but all of these other ticks are associated with different hosts like rodent nests or let's say down in the desert, they are associated with tortoise burrows. So there's a whole lot of diversity. And so one tick can transmit one thing and another tick can transmit something that's completely different. So the risk associated with all these different types of ticks is very different. So not all ticks are the same. And we have lots of different types of ticks in California. That's very interesting. It's very similar to uh, like mosquitoes. There's tons of mosquito species, but not all of them bite us. And like you mentioned, some of them uh, like ticks are only specific to rodents. And like you mentioned, uh, 
uh, burrows of, um, of, of turtles. And that's pretty crazy to hear that the same thing applies when it comes to ticks. Uh, and that's just here in California, right? I'm sure it's a whole other world, every state and nationally as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Different ticks are associated with different environments, ticks that are on the East Coast, we don't have out here and vice versa. So I mean, and then you have to consider just like y'all work with invasive 80s down there, there are invasive ticks that are in the US too. And so researchers at the federal and state levels are always looking just to see if more things are coming into their areas just because it provides a new layer of risk. Very interesting. Uh, so once again, my name is Pablo and this is Mosquito Bites Live and I'm joined by uh, Megan Saunders, PhD, and we're talking about all things ticks today. Uh, Megan just went over about some of the misconceptions when it comes to ticks and the big diversity that there is in ticks and that not all ticks uh, are specifically looking out for human hosts. Some of them are looking for uh, different uh, mammals out there. So that's very interesting to know. Um, my second question e here is, have you noticed any major changes in tick and tick-borne diseases these past few years? Is there anything we should all watch for in the, in the future? Yeah, so sometimes it's hard to say from a year to year sort of look at things, but you know, I'm gonna sort of say to start out in the US, like our most common vector-borne disease is Lyme disease by far over the last few years. Um, but here in California, it's our second most common disease. We usually see more West Nile virus. So mosquitoes are a little more important in that, um, uh, in our state here, but like nationally ticks are the most important vector. And one of the interesting things is, so as I mentioned, there's a lot of diversity of ticks in California, which means we have a lot of different diseases. So Lyme disease is fairly common for us, but it's nowhere near as common as it would be out on like in Massachusetts or in Delaware, out on the East Coast or even in the upper Midwest. But that being said, our research like in our materials that we can use to study ticks and the pathogens that they transmit is always improving. And even since like 2000, we've discovered like eight different new pathogens that can cause human disease. Wow. Like probably more honestly, because that's just through 2017 right. if you're looking at the literature, but like we're discovering more and more every day. And some things that maybe we thought were one thing are actually another closely related disease. So mm -hmm. we're learning more and more. So as climate changes, as people move around more, just like with mosquito borne diseases, things move around a bit. So like you might get new ticks moving into an area that can transmit something you never even thought about before. So overall nationally, we're seeing kind of increases in uh, tick-borne diseases. So just in general, the more things change, the more we're gonna learn and the more we have to keep our eyes out and open for. That's and really interesting. Thank Go you. Ahead. Oh, sorry, I just wanna give a shout out to my friend Carrie who joined and um, <laughs> Allie, thank you. I like my earrings too. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and like you were mentioning, that's really interesting to see again. And I think that's something that the general public has really come to be aware of is uh, just like COVID, vector borne diseases are constantly changing by what's affecting or um, what is or what isn't moving and what is changing. So that's very interesting to see that is the same thing with ticks. And especially here in California, our environment is very diverse. Uh, versus Northern, Central, or Southern California. And a lot of the things that we face here, for example, the drought that we're currently in and the wildfires that we experience on a yearly basis here in California, I'm sure that is affecting a lot of uh, the tick behavior out there. Yeah, it is. And it's affecting their habitat as well. Like, and, and we're still learning about exactly how some of the, especially these long scale burns are really gonna you know, affect um, what happens with tick populations. So it's maybe not what people would expect. They may not go down. They may be just enough saved that they're still gonna be around 
And then, as you mentioned, different areas, like down in the south, they, we have, you know, Rocky Mountain spotted fever um, being transmitted across the border back and forth using sort of systems of dogs and dog ticks of different types and specifically the brown dog tick. And it's, you know, very different. We're up in the Bay Area where I live, we see tons of Ixodes specificus, these little guys, the ones that <laughs> which, I'm sure they're, I hope they're not that big. <laughs> I, that would be a great horror movie if they were that big. But right. we those, and those can transmit um, Lyme disease and hun human anaplasmosis. So they, like, there's, there's so much diversity and so many different areas. We have ticks that we only see up in the High Sierra areas, like say near Truckee, near Tahoe. And those can transmit their own set of diseases. So it, it all depends. It all depends on where you are. That's very good. Lots of, lots of love for your earrings here on the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, my name is Paula and I'm joined here uh, by uh, uh, Megan Saunders, PhD. And we're talking all things ticks today. Uh, we went over um, what we're experiencing, uh, some misconceptions when it comes to ticks. What, we don't know versus what we do know. Uh, and then also some of the changes that we're seeing uh, in ticks, the big diversity in ticks and what different ticks can spread and what, uh, and what they can't. And that brings me to my next question is, how, um, oh, that was my other question. My next question <laughs> is, um, what are your top three tips people should know about when it comes to tick prevention? Oh, 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 oh. oh there are so many, but only three. All right, number one, and I think this is important in California because, and this is just be aware when you're going outdoors and out into sort of natural areas that there could be a risk of running into ticks. Like the more you know. And also, even if you're just going outside, if you say have a dog that you walk and you take to the local park, ticks are hitchhikers. So they come in with them. So even if you're, living in a pretty urban area, you may have ticks in your own backyard just because they have been brought there either on say a bird or a rodent or your four-legged best friend. So yeah, the first thing is just be aware that they're out there. The second tick prevention tip that I have is do your tick checks. <laughs> whenever you come inside, because the best way to prevent tick-borne diseases is not to get bitten. Now, of course, you can't guarantee that you won't get bitten, but if you're doing these tick checks, you can make sure that you're checking places where they like to attach and getting them off really quickly, because the less time they're attached to you, or if you find them before you, or they attach to you, the less likely it is that you'll get sick. So, Ticks like to attach in dark, warm, damp areas. So on your body, that might mean up under your hair and your armpits, hard to reach areas like your back, around your waistband, and your belly button, which is super creepy. <laughs> um, the groin, also very creepy. Um, and behind your knees. So do your tick checks. And if you find a tick attached, remove it promptly. Get it off. ASAP, and the best way to do that is using tweezers, putting them close to the attachment point right next to your skin and pulling firmly and gently straight up. Don't use Vaseline, don't burn them off with matches or anything. You're more likely to hurt yourself than you are to like quickly get that tick off. And no- so Just put an open flame to the tick. Uh, yeah, no one off. likes the smell of burning hair and skin. Let's <laughs> let's just cut that out right now. Not good. <laughs> and then the third important tip, and it's great for mosquitoes too, is to use an EPA registered repellent product. Specifically for ticks, check and see if it is um, for use with ticks. But I mean, DEET is. DEET is great, so DEET, picaridin, um, IR35, um, and uh, oil of lemon and eucalyptus are all for use with ticks, or to prevent ticks 
And, you know, you probably won't get very many mosquito bites either if you're putting these on every time you go outside. So those, those are really, really helpful. And like you mentioned, especially using repellent, uh, it'll help prevent any mosquito bites as well. So that's another huge bonus. So no ticks and no mosquito bites. Our uh, director of scientific programs here, uh, Melissa, likes to say, deet your feet. Uh, yeah. to uh, help prevent any mosquito and any ticks from getting on you because uh, we have technicians that are out in the field uh, and constantly out there and they do come in contact with ticks quite often. Uh, so that's always very important part of our tick prevention here at the district. Yeah, absolutely. That should be a fantastic hashtag. We are on <laughs> right now. Hashtag <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, special shout out to Melissa on that one. Deet your feet is a great way to remember to uh, prevent any uh, tick, uh, any tick bites that, that might be coming your way. And I also like how you acknowledge uh, when it comes to our four-legged friends, everyone likes walking their dogs and we have our dogs. And especially for those of us who might have our dogs inside, we unknowingly might be inviting those ticks into our bed, into our couches, or anywhere we'd like to hang out coming with our dog. So that's super important to make sure that we're also protecting our uh, fur babies. Sometimes we take care of them more than we take care of ourselves. So that's very important to, uh, to know as well. Absolutely. My, my dog brings in more ticks than sometimes <laughs> I get when I go out collecting. <laughs> <laughs> So once again, my name is Pablo and I'm joined by uh, Megan Saunders, PhD. And today we're talking about all things ticks. Uh, we went over some misconceptions about when it comes uh, to ticks here in California, uh, the, some of the changes that we've seen uh, ticks here in California and nationally and how our environment can uh, affect tick behavior. Uh, and then we went over three important tips uh, that you can go, that you should know about when it comes to tick prevention. Um, and that is making sure that we're protecting our pets from ticks, uh, that we are doing our own self tick check to make sure that we ourselves aren't bringing them in, and uh, making sure that we're using uh, repellent to prevent uh, uh, ticks from biting us. And an also added bonus, preventing mosquitoes like Ada from biting us as well. So those are huge bonuses. And my final question, Megan, which is my fun question that I like to ask all of my guests that I have here on Mosquito Bites Live, but this one's gonna be a little bit of a twist. Um, as opposed to being a mosquito, this uh, is a tick. So if you were a tick, what would your name be? Ooh, I mean, oh, I will say this. I feel like the people who name mosquitoes really had a lot of fun with some of their names. But so some of, some of our ticks are pretty cool too. But I think I would have to go with, this is gonna sound really nerdy, but I would go with Amblyoma sinistra subspecies vampiricus because I would love to be a sinister vampire. And as Halloween's coming up, I'm also left-handed, so have, Hey, all those Latin speakers, Sinister is left <laughs> So I think it would work for me. <laughs> I love that. Very, very clever and very well thought out as well. You know, ticks are out there questing. So yeah, you maybe your left hand would be a little stronger. Little, little, get that arm up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, once again, this was Mosquito Bites Live, and today I was joined by uh, Megan Saunders, PhD, and we talked about all the things ticks. Be sure to check out the rest of our episodes of Mosquito Bites Live, um, as well as any other ones that we might have available, as well as this one that will, be get, that will get posted later. Megan, any final closing remarks that you'd like to leave us with? Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me, and um, just as... Uh, the weather gets cooler, don't let your guard down. Adult ticks are starting to be active again. So do those tick checks. California, we got year round ticks. So <laughs> just stay vigilant people. <laughs> Very helpful uh, tips and good information to know. And yes, as California, uh, we experienced 90 degree weather just the other day here in Southern California. So yeah, ticks are very much year round, just how we deal with mosquitoes. So making sure that we're protecting ourselves uh, from uh, some of those vectors that are out there trying to get us. And especially in the month of October, this scary month, what is scarier than uh, ticks or 
wanting to latch on to us uh, or mosquitoes looking for our blood out there. Uh, thank you so much, Megan, for joining us for this episode of Mosquito Bites Live. And um, if people want to follow you, Megan, where can they follow you? Um, I am on Instagram at, and Twitter at Megsquito PhD. Awesome. So be sure to uh, follow Megan for some of her cool insights and what she finds out in the field and some of the cool stuff that she's a part of. Uh, Megan, thank you so much for joining us. This was a great Mosquito Bites Live. Until next time, we'll see you then. All right. Thanks, Babu. Thanks, Thanks Megan. Bye. See ya. <laughs>